Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, back again with another photography tutorial video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, be sure to do so and then click that uh, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. Uh, but within this video, within my photography tutorial playlist, I'm going to explain how to uh, how to blur the background or how to create bokeh, B-O-K-E-H. There's a lot of different terms that photographers or videographers use for that. And I keep looking around because I'm in bear country in Appalachia right now. So I've got some uh, candy in my pocket and a lot of people don't realize, but bears are often attracted to deodorants, toothpaste, candy, and not only meat. So, <laughs> you know, don't uh, <laughs> be bear aware and, uh, you know, have, uh, have that bear knowledge. I'm not afraid of bears, but I'm always, uh, always aware. So, yeah, I mean, creating, uh, creating a blurred background is actually quite easy. Now, a few things that you want to keep in, uh, keep in mind is that the best and smoothest, most buttery, whatever terminology that you want to use to describe it, some of the best blurred backgrounds come from, cam from photographs that are created with interchangeable lens cameras such as the camera that I'm filming this video with. This video I'm filming with a, uh, with a 25 millimeter lens. This is also my, my primary photography camera body as well. So to, for, the, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna reference this camera. And you can expand this video's description and then click the link there to find the camera body and the lens that I have in my hand. But this lens in my hand is my favorite uh, is my favorite lens for creating that blurred background, the bokeh, the defocused background, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of different terms that mean the same thing. But what is, uh, if I can get it out of my case here, what's essential is a, and I recommend a prime lens, a non-zoom lens. This is an 85 millimeter lens that does not zoom in, so it's fixed at 85 millimeter. 85 millimeter for portraits. You can get uh, lenses that are like a 135 millimeter or so that even have more zoom. But for my purposes, I found 85 millimeter to be the sweet spot. I don't have to stand too far back from the subject, but I can uh, I can still get uh, you know I get that really good bokeh that that uh, defocused background that we're talking about within this video. So this is an 85 millimeter f 1.8. That 1.8 is super important. That's the aperture. So when I'm going to maximize my background bar using this camera body, and, and again, you can find this 85 millimeter lens and the camera body. Just expand this video's description, and you can click the links there. But what's uh, what's so cool about this is that when I put it down, when I put the camera down to 1.8 aperture, and I snap that photo, the you know, and, and obviously I do the eye focus for the subject. When I do that, the background just seems to dissolve. It becomes very blurred. It creates what's called bokeh or whatever. So in its, in its rawest form, that's how to do it. You know, if, if I put this lens on the camera, if I set my aperture to f1.8, because that's, that's shooting this lens wide open, and then I go and uh, photograph a subject, get, you know, get the subject perfectly focused, you know, get as close to them as I can. I wanna, you wanna try to fill the, fill the frame because the closer you are, the, the more, the more uh, defocused that background's gonna look. Because if I stand far away, if I've got a subject, you know, 150 feet away and I snap a photo of them, even though I'm using f1.8 aperture, it's not gonna create that defocused background. Optimally, I'm probably five to 10 feet away. So, you know, you create that photo and then you'll notice the background's dissolved or defocused. Well, that's great. But how do I get those really cool looks? You know, you look through, um, you look through the internet and you see these photos, these award-winning photos, this, that, and the other, and, and they've got all kinds of like balls of light and, and all kinds of funky things in the background. It's like, what in the world is that? That's where it gets interesting. So what I suggest doing, experiment with different, uh, with different backgrounds. One of the common backgrounds uh, that creates a very visually pleasing uh, uh, defocused background, for example, Christmas tree. Christmas tree with multicolored lights. Turn those lights on put your subject directly in front of the Christmas tree and take a photograph at f1.8 using a camera body and lens such as this. And look at that, because you'll be like, wow, you know, that doesn't even look like a Christmas tree in the background. It's just got really cool lights, you know, balls of lights. That's, that's, uh, that's the value of, of using, and, and all of this, all of this goes into a, uh, 
there's a term it's called shallow depth of field so when you're shooting wide open with an 85 millimeter lens such as this at f 1.8 when you're shooting wide open which means your your aperture is 1.8 your depth of field so you don't a common misconception among uh, uh, novice photographers is that you're focusing upon something and you know you're focusing and it's it's staying focused on an object the reality is is that focus is distance so if I'm standing here and I don't move and my subject is five feet in front of me and they don't move and then I set my camera to f 1.8 aperture when I've set my aperture of this lens or of the camera to 1.8 because this is an f 1.8 lens I'm gonna blur it as much as I can but the thing is, when you're at f1.8, the depth of field is not as big. So if that subject moved closer to me, or I move closer to them, or they move further back, or I move further back, if the distance between the subject and I fluctuates, then they're not going to be peak, in peak focus anymore. And by using a shallow depth of field such as that, you know, if they just move a few inches, your photograph may not be perfectly focused. Whereas if you use Let's say you're using the same lens, but instead of selecting f1.8 aperture, you selected an f8. Then the depth of field, and I'm, I'm just, this is just an example here. But let's say f1.8 depth of field was this much. Well, then you bump up to f8, maybe it's this big. So then that person could move a few feet forward or a few feet backwards, or the photographer could move, and they're still gonna be somewhat perfectly well focused. Now the trade-off in that scenario, since it was shot in f8, instead of f1.8 is that there's going to be less defocused background so to really get that really buttery smooth defocused background you know that bokeh that uh, blurred background whatever term you want to use to describe it to get that really professional photo photo look this is what you do and again just to recap and, and expand this video's description and click the link there you can find my camera body in this 85 millimeter lens Get you a good lens with a, with a, and f1.8, there's lenses that are even better in f1.8, but I found f1.8 to be awesome. So, use my f1.8 lens, putting it on my camera body, setting my aperture to 1.8. I'm standing probably five to 10 feet from the subject and, you know, doing eye focus, focus on their eyes. They're perfectly focused, and then the background just dissolves around them. It's not rocket science. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of photographers would lead people to believe that it's that it's more complicated than it is and we're going to address the more comp more uh more in-depth questions within other videos within my photography tutorial playlist so subscribe to my channel ring that bell icon be notified whenever i post a new video but uh yeah i'm going to post a lot of a lot more photography tutorials because it can it can be very basic but if you learn the basics it's easy to fine tune the craft. And that's a lot of people, a lot of people step away from it because they're like, man, this is just, you know, this is too complicated. You know, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't do this. You know, I've got to go to photography school or whatever, or boot camp to learn how to do this. The reality is it's a lot of trial and error. So, you know, I hope the takeaway from this video, if you try this and then you're like, wow, you know, I didn't know that I could take, I didn't know that I had the abilities to capture a photo with a blurred background like this. You know, what's next? If, if you look at it from, from that perspective, it's like, wow, you know, you've got the sense of accomplishment and then you figure out how to further fine tune that skill set. you know, by shooting in front of a Christmas tree with lights, by shooting in front of uh, trees in the fall with multiple colors. You know, you can figure out shooting in daytime versus nighttime, you know, different situations because they will create background defocus background bokeh out of focus background whatever you want to call it that looks visually different because of the colors the lights etc so i don't know it's exciting stuff and if you like this video be sure to like it and again subscribe to my channel ring that bell choose to support me on patreon if you want to you can find a link to that within this video's description i'm an independent youtuber not part of a multi-channel network so you know all of your support uh, definitely helps and any camera equipment or anything you're looking for expand this video's description click the links there and uh, that also helps me a lot thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day hey y'all i rick sky here thanks again for your viewership be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that bell icon to be notified whenever i post another video if you're looking for uh Iron skies adventure channel merch 
like this t-shirt and a lot of other cool stuff, expand this video's description. You can find it all there. Y'all have a good day.